Alright, what's going on guys? This is Papa Orselli from NicheGamer.com here. I'm going to do a more focused preview for Dawn of Man. It's a newly released city builder slash strategy game slash survival game. Did a couple of streams for this, but I felt like they are more focused on kind of talking about the game, relaxing, having fun. So there wasn't a more focused look at the game itself. So people would tune in and you get like a good overview of the game, but not a very concentrated, here's a tutorial, here's how the game plays, here's how, you know, you get set up and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm going to start a new map, you know, it's going to be like a 20 minute tutorial, so kind of first look sort of thing. I'm looking to have us start doing these videos for the website where we do these more bite-sized takes on games where we're showing you what the game's like, how to play it, and we're just kind of talking about the game. It's going to be fun, so... It's a really promising game. The, re the full review will be coming very soon. So anyway, I've been playing in the lake areas recently. I haven't tried a river map recently, so let's see. Maybe we'll do the forest river. Eh, I don't know. I think maybe the twisty river will be kind of cool. So let's try doing this. And then it's obviously by the coast, so there's going to be more fish along the coast. The thing about this game is that the the different sections of maps are very focused. It seems like the, the doodads, or whatever you want to call them, are sort of set every time. So, you know, we'll see. We'll, let's, we'll hop right into it. So, I think we'll try the... Eh, I'm torn. I don't know. I, <laughs> let's try the Forest River. Whatever. Let's try this, right? So, I had another map that was kind of screwing up so we'll, we'll make this the new Samaria you know so if you're a Conan fan you can check out um this is based off of that obviously so anyway um so this is a prehistoric you know paleolithic set city builder slash strategy game so it starts out at the very beginnings of human civilization right so you have seven people in the beginning I think it's like four adults, three children, or it looks like actually five adults, two children, right? So if you're not into micromanaging the city builders, you'll probably be turned off by this game. It requires a bit more micromanaging. It can get a little overwhelming at times, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty fun. So anyway, so to start off, you place these work areas, right? So in most kind of conventional city builders you would have villagers a through f or whatever right and you would tell them hey you're gonna get berries for your entire life that's all you're gonna do that's not how this game works in this game you actually have to manage tasks so you set all of these work areas for your villagers to do stuff to fish to hunt to gather berries to gather trees stone flint etc as there's stuff required to make tools and things like that they'll go and do it. It's kind of weird to wrap your head around at first if you're a fan of this genre like I am, longtime fan. But once you get the hang of it, it's cool. Each villager has their own inventory, right? So they have clothes, they have a harpoon, a wooden spear. So anyway, let's get some, let's actually get some uh, collection areas first. So we'll do a fishing area right here by the river, right? Uh, so that's, you know, put that down. Hey, look at the cow <laughs> swimming through the river. <laughs> look at that. That's pretty funny. He's like, yep, yep, I'm doing it. I'm do <laughs> That's funny. So anyway, you set this fish area, right? And then you have the limits of how many people are going to work it and the actual limit of fish that you're going to get from these two areas, right? And this is a pretty in-depth survival management city builder whatever you want to call it you know you can't just fish these forever eventually the fish gets depleted there's only a set number of fish same thing with the animals right so you have the animals over here you set a hunting area right the animals will run away they it's it gets it gets interesting right so what you'll want to do from the get-go is get people say i highlighted my dude and my woman right here actually it's a two dudes with spears so they're both going to go and hunt this deer over here. So let's uh, let's go over here. We're going to get a different angle of it, right? So they're sneaking up, right? 
and hopefully both of them throwing spirits at the same time will kill it instantly. So, and we take it down. Oh, now they're chasing it. So, see, the issue is <laughs> they chase it for a while. Hopefully they kill it. If it gets away, we're kind of boned, but we'll see. So they're going to hunt it and hopefully take it down. So let's see. They're going to chase it. You can speed up the game. This is normal speed, so this is two times speed. And there's hotkeys for this. There's hotkeys one through, um, you know, numbers one through four. This is times four, and this is times eight. So obviously the thing is, look, at this. he's swimming across the river. This thing is like far away. I, I don't know. It's almost dead though. It's limping. See that it's limping. So they might actually take it down. Here we go. Let's 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 see if they can go in for the kill. So oh oh ah, they got it. Nice. So now that they killed this animal, they're gonna harvest it for meat, skins, and bones. So in the beginning, you have to really 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 micromanage your people and their workload. Because obviously, you only have seven people. And it gets a little overwhelming with the management of what they're wearing, their tools, their food supply. And you can customize the interface, right? So by default, you have all of your inventory. So you see, you have your raw, raw skins, your spears, um, harpoons, bones, flint, etc. You can add your food level. So it'll show you zero. We have no food. <laughs> It's not good. And as you do these things, you're killing animals, you get these knowledge points, which is ironic, right? So you're you're literally murdering animals, getting knowledge points. And as you get more, you can unlock more technology. So right now we're in the Paleolithic, right? So the very beginnings of human technology. So bone tools, composite tools, sling making, food drying, tanning, etc. So as we do these things, as you build things, right, um, you get these points and you can unlock more stuff. So I also want to get some more collection stuff here. So we're going to do some more work areas. We'll do flint, which we need, we need a lot of. So we'll have ah, there's some flint right here. All right, cool. So usually the defaults for this stuff, you don't really need to change much in the beginning. So 10, that's more than plenty for a very small population. Stone. Might as well get some stone too, why not? Uh, hold on, that, that's flint. Hold on, we'll go back. Place work area, we'll get some stone. Got a lot of stone right there. So work area, we're also going to do collect plants, right? So you want to get some berries and stuff because those are free. And let's see, what is this? That's a service tree. So service trees, they get you fruit. I'm not sure if it's like berries or... It's some kind of fruit. <laughs> I'm not sure. But it's it's free. It's it's easy to get food, right? So you want to get uh, collect and harvest wild plants. So we'll get that going. Oh, there's like a there's some bushes over there too. The thing about some of these though, see barley, you can only harvest this in the fall. And the problem with barley is I don't know if you can eat this raw, right? Like eventually you can get uh, let me see. I think it's under eight. No, seven tasks. Where is it? Is it number five? No, milestones. Where is it? Where the hell's the knowledge? Uh, hold on. <laughs> We're skipping through stuff too much. So let's go to no uh, what it, whatever. So I think you can't you can't actually harvest barley until you until you get to grain processing, right? So that's in the Mesolithic. So at that point you can get a mortar where they crush the grain into powder. Then they can make it into flour, and then they can make bread out of it. Eventually, you get domestication where you actually get farms. Look at that, see? See, this thing escaped. They tried hunting it, so it's running away. It kind of sucks, but whatever. So anyway, let's try to get some stuff going. So we'll get some skin dryers over here. So it's going to sound weird, but you need a lot of skin dryers. This is a pro tip if you're playing Dawn of Man. So you want to get a lot of skin dryers. I actually go with five because if you do five of these things, you're actually going to... Oh, all right, we need to do some sticks. So in the beginning, you have to gather sticks. It's kind of a big deal. So you have to get a stick gatherer, right? There's a whole shitload over here. Look at that. So we'll do some sticks, right? So, and also, we're going to queue up these. This is the crafter right here. So you can set 
crafting to be automatic so as they need bifaces right it's like the basic basic of cutting tools it's like it's like a sharp stone um harpoons and spears they're going to craft them for their people so in the beginning you want to make sure everyone has a biface everyone has a spear everyone has clothes so eventually you're basically just making sure your people are are equipped with this stuff because that that's the major problem that that happens when you're city state gets bigger and bigger later on you start to lose track of who has what how many people are properly equipped there's a proper food supply coming in because trust me it could be one winter i oh, look at this no storage slots <laughs> all right that's another thing i should have built a skin dryer right away so the issue is you need to start building storage tents asap i'm talking like as soon as possible so see how quickly I mismanaged our town. So we have no fuel for the campfire. We have no fuel because we don't have any sticks being collected. And our food uh, income is pretty much non-existent. So you can really mismanage stuff quickly. But thankfully, I'm not speeding through time. So if you're doing this you know, times two, times four, you're trying to blast through setting up your town, you can mismanage stuff very quickly. So... It's actually good to, to show off how quickly you can mismanage this stuff. So we got one, two, three, four. We need one more. So we're going to get one more skin dryer. So then we'll get a free uh, knowledge point. So anyway, we're going to build also. Uh, we got a crafter. we got a hearth. Let's build one more hearth while we're at it, right? So we'll get one more of those going. We're also going to build a... A rock pile it sounds kind of goofy but we're gonna get a rock pile because you need that for flint and stone so now that we've got these placed i'm also going to build a storage tent because once we get the skin dryers built they're gonna start drying skins then you can start building more huts you can start building the storage hut so let's um we're gonna build this and you got to be careful with how you're designing your your village because you don't want to get too too big too quickly, right? Because people are going to be grabbing supplies. They're going to be sort of um, going back and forth. So it gets a little overwhelming. So we're going to do this. We're going to put the storage tents facing this way, I think. Yeah, that's going to be good. So we'll do it this way. And then, so they're going to be kind of facing the production stuff over here. And then we're going to build that. We'll build... Actually, you know, let's hold off on building um, a tent, and I I'm going to show you why. So as you get tasks being queued up by your people, right, you can see we're at 129% workload. So a lot of people have been playing this game and are like, you know, pre-release, right at release and stuff like that, and they're wondering why their people are just not doing anything. You have to really manage the tasks and the workload that your people have, because this isn't, oh, look at this, see, no flint, we have no flint. So, <laughs> so, see, we've got one person getting 10 flint, and yeah, we ran out of flint. So, and they're trying to queue up, oh, no, see, they just need spears, whatever. So, let's speed things up a little bit to get this, this dryer built, so they need more sticks, right? Anyway, look at this, see, they're going to build the, the dryer, and they need two more? Really? Interesting. So anyway, the problem is if you have too high of a workload, your people start to get, I'm not sure if it's the AI, if it's intentional, if it's just the, the way the game is, they get kind of bogged, they get bogged down, right? So they, they, get, they get confused, whatever. They don't know what, <laughs> what to do. So you really have to manage the workload for your people. And as your population grows, you have to be really, really careful that you're not overloading the current population that you have. And it really gets crazy when you have, you'll see like three, four rows of tasks, depending on the season, depending on the the work areas that you're doing. And I should have shown this early on, but if you hit tab, you go into the hunter mode and you can see it shows the points of interest, the animals you can hunt, the crops you can harvest. It'll show the areas you can work, so the water... It shows the trees that have berries. It shows the stone and stuff like that. It's good to know these hotkeys to make it easier for you to kind of be flinging around, planning stuff out. 
So tab goes back. So right now I think we're times four speed. So you can see the people live out their day-to-day -day life. They're not just machines where, you know, yeah, see, look at this. There <laughs> no storage spots left. So we're still waiting to get one more stick to build this skin dryer. And you can see, see they're cooking the meat right here. So they're grabbing meat and they're going to eat it. So, and see our food production is kind of, you know, it's, it's looking pretty good. You want to be above 10 because, or whatever your limit is, depending on your population, because at that point, if you're below the gray line in your food production, you're going to be boned. So here we go. Hooray, skin dryers being built. All right, there we go. So once that's built, you're going to see them loading skins up on here right away. So check this out. They're going to grab it. They're going to grab a skin from somewhere and they're going to put skins on here. Here we go. Right. There they go. See, they put a skin on there. So the skin's going to dry. So we got like what? Two skins in queue. So once those are done, they can build the storage tent. They need four dry skins and eight sticks. So you like, see, look, they, they spam you with <laughs> no storage spots, no, no flint, no, you know, it's like, all right, all right, all right. I got it. I got it. I got it. So obviously you see sticks times 10. Cool. We almost have enough knowledge to get our first thing. And the first thing we should be getting is food drying because food drying is critical to pr making your food last longer. That's going to be critical because you have your meats, your fish, even I think, uh, I think the grains and stuff, I'm not sure, but I know meats and stuff, obviously an old, old trick is to dry them, salt them, and they last a lot longer. And it's just, it's, it's a survival. It's, it's as old as mankind. So you see these people are kind of floating around. Some dudes gathering sticks. We've got some pending tasks here. So building a skin dryer, building a hearth, building a storage tent, crafting a harpoon, crafting a spear. So you see they're putting the they're putting the skins down. So we've got two here. We need sticks. So we got all right. We've got some sticks coming in. Let's speed things up a little bit more. So times eight speed, right? So they built the next skin dryer. So that's, that's the next one done. So we're going to get that going. And while we're at it, let's put another work area for hunting over here. Cause there's a lot, there's a lot of animals running around over here. Right. And it's good to put these near the, like the watering holes, I guess you could say, because there is quite a bit of, and we're going to, we're going to put a, a, um, a berry slash crop gathering thing over here too. So see, they're, they're starting to hunt animals as they need them. Right. So, I think they took down another animal, maybe. Let me see. I think I just, they, they were, it's, it's going too fast. So <laughs> I think right now we're in summer. Yeah. So as you put these more work areas down, they're going to do more tasks. See, they're gathering berries now, but see, this dude is like almost naked. That's the problem. So as you get more skins, they're going to make more skin outfits. And then they're all wearing skins. When winter comes and you've got no thick clothes for them to wear, they get hypothermia, they die. You know, st stuff can spiral out of control pretty quickly in this game. So, because you're, you're managing the beginnings of humanity, basically, right, of mankind. So, they should be building this pretty quick. We just need some sticks. They're bringing back some meats. So, yeah, you see, you have to really micromanage the workload that you've got. So, you yeah, see, they're gathering sticks. And, you know, we're, we're below 100%, so that's pretty good. I think below 150% seems to be the sweet spot. So if you go above 150%, they get bogged down. All right, cool. So here, let's, let's slow down real quick. So now we got seven. We're going to unlock food drying. It's like the most critical thing, I think, right? So uh, get rid of the flint. All right, no storage spots. All right, all right, all right. So we're going to build the food dryer. So we're going to put this probably, I want to leave space over here for a wall, you know, because eventually walls are critical. The walls are kind of controversial in this day and age. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's like literally, it just makes sense from a defensive standpoint. <laughs> you know, if you're trying to defend an area and create a physical barrier, I mean, that's the easiest way. And obviously pre, I would say in, you know, market economy, pre-industrial times, whatever it's, it's debatable at what point in the city, the age of the city state fell and there's no more like warlords and crap like that. But yeah, 
That stuff still happens in this day and age. So eventually, you have to plan out your walls, your gates, and things like that. So let's get this built over here. So, so you can see, you know, food production is going down a little bit because we're in fall now. So as the seasons change, you can only harvest certain things. So berries and things that are available in spring and summer are no longer available in fall. Same thing within the winter, the fish go away. So obviously, you know, these seasons come and go, so things have to change. You have to plan out these things. So, and I made the mistake of not building a storage tent early on. So we'll speed these things up a little bit. So they don't have anywhere to store. See, look, resource has decayed fruit because we don't have a storage tent to store this stuff in. So we got need one, we need two, uh, three more sticks. All right. So this is basically like a, a, a crash course on on starting out your your first settlement in Dawn of Man. So you see the temperatures going down as we're getting you know like storms come in. It's it it fluctuates so much. So you really have to be a lot more mindful of this stuff. So we're going to wait for this storage tent to be finished. Let me double check. There should be, yeah, so somebody's gathering sticks. <laughs> it should tell you who, yeah, Carrie is getting sticks, right? So, see, look at that. Uh, they're putting, st <laughs> they're putting sticks in the food dryer and not the storage tent. So we're going to put high priority on the store. Uh, let me see, are they bringing, see, that's the other thing too. I have too many things to be built being queued up. So there we go, see? So now they're going to build the storage tent. And then we'll, we'll be on our, our merry way. So they're building it piece by piece. It's kind of cool. So this is kind of an, a, a very brass tacks approach to Dawn of Man. It's going to give you an idea of how to start out. So you really want to focus small. Like you don't want to expand too quickly. You don't want to get too many people coming in too quickly. And then winter comes and you don't have any food all of a sudden, half your population dies because you can't support <laughs> these in, these new people coming in. People get born. People, as long as you have housing for it, obviously, people get born. People come and immigrate into your city, so or town. So it really is a game about micromanaging the number of people you have. And hey, we got more knowledge points. So we'll, I think next we should do probably bone tools. Eventually. It, you get composite tools and you can cut you can cut down trees and it helps a lot with getting fuel for this stuff. So anyway, that's pretty much Dawn of Man, the beginnings. So if you guys like this, please subscribe, please comment, like, all that fun stuff. Check out nichegamer.com. I'm sure if you're watching this, you already you already do, you already like us. Patreon.com slash niche gamer, even a dollar a month helps. We're looking at a lot of stuff in the future, a lot of cool stuff coming. So if you want to see more preview stuff for Dawn of Man, let me know. Put, go down in the comments, tweet at me, whatever. Let me know. We are going to be doing more preview streams in more sizable chunks, like 20 minutes more focused where we're just looking at the game. We're talking about the mechanics. And we're showing it off. We're having fun. So again, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Later.